And uh, you know, I guess I wanted to start about start with uh, you know, give you sort of a, a brief idea about you know what geography is, and, and growing up in a place like India, where a lot of my friends uh, think of geography essentially as as a way of answering about questions about where places are in capitals and so on. But I think it's more than that. It's really about understanding processes and, and about how pl people, places, and processes are connected together. Now these processes could be, could be of different kinds. They could be physical processes or cultural and economic processes. But what interests me the most are processes that result in differential health outcomes. And I think the best example of that would be this map by John Snow in 1854 where he talked about um, essentially a cholera outbreak in London. And the idea here was that he mapped the locations of where cholera deaths were occurring and he attributed the problem to a pump that was located in Broad Street that was supplying contaminated water. But with modern GIS, you know, the ability to bring together these different data layers is, is, is very easy. You can bring a lot of data together and you can make maps. And the problem is that some of these maps are not very meaningful. And sometimes these maps are merely presenting data rather than actually representing the process. I have some examples here from the National Cancer Institute and, and they have several maps that you can, you can click on the website and produce. And these are essentially showing you cancer burdens across, across the country and these are categorized by you know, administrative boundaries like uh, economic areas or counties. And you know, when you look at these maps, you, you get tempted to think about uh, these questions that, that, that are implying perhaps that you know, are these uh, risks of cancer changing as you move from one unit to another. What actually makes these uh, maps worse is that if you're not careful about the choice of unit uh, when you're creating the maps, you can actually end up getting very different maps. And here's TB outcomes in Tarrant County in Texas, and it's the exact same data. But the data has been manipulated to show basically different results. The map on the extreme right is you know, pretty good, very, very low incidence, and the one on the right shows pretty high incidence. But you know, there's more complexity to this. You know, population structures are different, um, environmental risks are different, um, there's disparity to healthcare access, and, and the, the question that I ask is, shouldn't our maps be representative of these processes as well? And so, you know, based on that notion, I have some recommendations on you know, what I think are good maps as far as at least public health policy is concerned. And, and these are some, some points that, that I wanted to make in this presentation. The first idea is that you want to try to make a map that's representative of the phenomena. And here we're looking at the same TB data that we looked at before, uh, except that I have a continuous representation that I think is more uh, representative of the process itself and not so much based on sort of arbitrary administrative boundaries. So it gives you a better view of the, uh, I think, of the, of, the, of, the, of the disease burden. We've been working quite closely with the Texas Department of uh, State Health Services and we've been constructing these maps for them that are looking essentially at HIV uh, and AIDS outcomes across the state. But what's interesting is the ability to start thinking about the geographies of, of where these diseases occur can, can prompt interesting questions. You can start asking questions like, what would happen if, the, if every place had the same population structure? What would my disease burdens look like? Or you could ask, start asking questions about, you know, what would happen if every place had the same risk of disease as the rest of the country? So the point that I'm making over here is that the map, there is no perfect map, there is no best map. You know, the map is generally driven by the purpose that you're trying to, you know, or the question that you're trying to answer, right? And depending on what you're trying to, you know, the questions that you're trying to answer, you make the most appropriate map for that purpose. These maps should further be, uh, I think, embedded within place context. You need to know, you know, what the underlying place is about. And here's again the HIV burden, but we've sort of zoomed into the Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex. And you can start looking at the areas in, in black there were, were essentially areas of, of low socioeconomic status. Here's uh, Des Moines, Iowa that had, this is the region that had the highest infant mortality rate in the state of Iowa, about 18 per thousand, right? So again, you need to start thinking about, well, what is it about the, the geography of that place that's resulting in those outcomes? You can take this to the next step and say, you know, we need to start automating this process as much as possible. We get data all the time. We're collecting data quite frequently. We're also concerned about the privacy and confidentiality of these health data sets. So the ability to automate these processes of disease mapping is important. And to that effect, uh, what I've been working on over the past couple of years is, the, uh, is this framework. And it's, a, it's an open source framework for, for mapping disease outcomes. And I, ca I call this WebDMAP. It's, it's downloadable from that website up there. But the idea is that it's an easy to use interface to essentially creating the kinds of maps that we've made so far. And you can start asking additional questions. You can start saying, now let me start looking at, at maybe differences over time. You know, how has burdens of cancer in the state of Iowa changed over a five-year period or a six-year period? 
you can start linking, I think, the, um, these disease outcomes to environmental risk factors. And we've done you know, some of this work when I was back in Iowa. We started looking at, at exposures to uh, contaminants coming from confined animal feeding operations. And you're starting asking the question that, you know, what is it about the disease? And does it in any way relate to um, these kinds of environmental risks? So I guess the you know the the the, the short uh, conclusion to the to this five minute talk is that you know maps maps are, are more than just tools to get you from Denton to Dallas. They can actually provide some useful insights into uh, disease processes. So.